Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got a fresh box from Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box number 94, and the name this month is Port Authority. Let's get this on the bench and open it up and see what we have inside here. This is the VGA32 single board computer. This will be the core device of focus for this month's box. We'll be playing around with its different interfaces or ports and trying some different code on it to see what we can do. This is an analog joystick module. These are some female to female DuPont jumpers. This is a USB to PS2 adapter. It has an icon of a keyboard on it, but it will also work for a mouse. But please note, this is a physical adapter only. The USB keyboard or mouse that you're using has to be compatible to do PS2 for this to work. And here we have some dual row male headers. This is a Max 3232 serial RS-232 to TTL adapter. This is a VGA to HDMI converter. This one is based on the MS9288A chip. And this will take our video VGA signal and allow us to take that analog audio and inject it. And the end result is it spits out a HDMI signal that should be compatible with any modern television or monitor. And here's the sticker we get in this month's box, this cool OG Port Authority sticker that looks like a face. Next, I've got this really cool glider pin that says Hack Life. And if you're not familiar with what a glider is, look into it. It's part of Conway's game of life. And I'm not gonna ruin it for you here. Just look into it if you're not familiar with it. It's pretty darn cool. And last but not least, we've got the HackerBox 94 Port Authority collector card. We've got information about some of the modules and the VGA32 on there. Very nice. Okay, and now it's time to get to tinkering around and I'm gonna reference the great how-to that they have on Instructables and Hackerboxes has these available for every kit they turn out and they're always handy. And there's a good comment section at the end, which might be good if you run into any bumps with going through or someone else may have gone through the same thing and you may see something covered there at the bottom after the main instructions. So always make sure to give that a look. It really adds a lot of value. Just one quick thing before we start putting our hands on the hardware here. You will need the Arduino IDE to do this stuff. So if you're following along and you don't have that yet, you might wanna go ahead and install that. And typically it's just a normal installation, nothing fancy, you shouldn't have any problem and you can get it for Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. Okay, the first thing you'll see that I'm doing here is getting the VGA to HDMI adapter ready to go. I'm gonna connect that up. I'm gonna take the sound output into the sound input just like you see in the provided drawing. And then I'll connect the VGA end of this to the VGA port of the VGA32. I'm gonna take the HDMI port from that at some point and I'll be hooking that into my capture card so I can show you what I'm seeing there. And just like the original diagram shows, it's basically just power for the unit, that audio VGA butts up to the VGA and then get my HDMI out to my capture card. After I got that set up, I went to looking for a mouse and I went through several of my mice until I finally got this one. <laughs> this is actually my daily driver mouse for my main workstation. And it's an old Microsoft Intelli mouse. but if you look right here, you'll see, even though it's USB, it says it's PS2 compatible. And that's gonna be your biggest pain if you use one of these adapters, if you don't just get an old school PS2 mouse and keyboard. Okay, as we follow along with the Instructables page, the first thing we're gonna try is this Hello World thing. And this code is already on the VGA32 as we get it out of the box. So we don't have to use Arduino or anything yet to put code on it. This is just a good base level thing to make sure we have everything hooked up. And in this case, to see if we can hear any sound as well as see if our mouse is working. Hello, this is FabGL sample speech demonstration. Hello, this is FabGL sample. Hello, this is FabGL sample. That all looked good. So the next thing referenced in the Instructable is to check out the FabGL graphics library and more specifically the Space Invaders sketch. So 
this is when we're going to need to start looking at the Arduino IDE. You want to make sure that if you don't already have it, you want to install ESP32 support for the board that we're using here. Go get these FabGL libraries like this, and then we'll need to install this Space Invaders sketch like this. This is a little off kilter in my capture card, but as you can see, it loads up and plays just fine. Pretty cool. And there's a little bit of delay I'm playing it on the capture here. Hey, that's pretty cool that it works. So the next thing in the Instructables is to go ahead and start messing with the serial port. But I couldn't do that. I'm a big, huge retro fan. And I love Commodore. And I especially love the VIC-20. Like many folks out there, that was the first computer that was really mine and kind of mine alone to mess with because it was unwanted from an uncle that had uh, upgraded to a C64 way back in the day. But anyway, if you notice here, there were some errors when compiling and that was because of uh, reference to some subdirectories that weren't present. So I did a little search and replace and removed all those references and finally got that thing to compile. And check out how this VIC-20 emulator is set up with a bunch of games and stuff already in there. Pretty cool. So this is the cool uh, menu you get when you get the VIC-20 thing loaded up. It's got a bunch of titles just kind of already smashed in there. But what's really cool is that you can also just dump the basic and do whatever one's favorite is, the little, uh, you know, 10 print loop here. That's always fun. There are plenty of other games to play with on here, like this Tetris and the classic Omega Race. Um, I bet there are ways to load up whatever you want on there. I just need to look into it a little bit further. Pretty cool. The next thing that caught my eye that also kept me from proceeding with the Instructable was the PC Emulator Sketch. So of course I had to load that thing up. But here is the pickle, and I'm not sure if it's a power related thing or what. But anytime when I got to this part of the menu, which is what it first boots up to, when I click yes for configure Wi-Fi with my mouse, my mouse will then turn off and it's an optical mouse. So I don't know if it's a power draw thing or what. So I went back and forth and tried different things and I could never proceed really past that. It would get to the you know point to pick an SSID because what it essentially goes out and does once you look at the source code is you can see where it goes out and pulls down the different OS's, the disk images and stuff like that. So what I did was I just went ahead and found in the source where those were and went and downloaded those and put those all on an SD card that I stuck in the VGA32. After I got the images onto the SD card and I booted up the PC emulator again on the VGA32, I had all of these menu options I could get to. All I had to do was hit like escape, I think, or enter, and I could get past the Wi-Fi screen, and then any of these menu options were available to me. And I'm gonna fly through some of those just so you can see what those are like here, but it will be kind of fast forwarded. Less do you think we were gonna get out of soldering with this hacker box. Here we go. We got a little soldering to do. And this is for the serial terminal part of the project. So we need to solder some headers here on the VGA32. We take the headers that we were supplied with, we cut off just the little four by four, eight pins there. We solder those in place. and then we will connect them to the serial module that was supplied with the hacker box, wiring it up as indicated in the instructions. Then I pushed the ANSI terminal sketch over to the VGA32. Now here's where I also didn't follow the instructions again. The instructions said make a loop back as a basic test. I did not do that. I went ahead and connected this up to my PyDP11 kit and I've had that hooked to a regular VT320 physical terminal before, so I knew that should work. So that was the first thing that I tried to hook up and use with this. Now back over here in the view, you can see where I've got it connected up and I get my login prompt here and I type in the username and I hit enter, but nothing ever really happens. So I'm not sure. I mean, clearly it's transmitting or it wouldn't be reflecting that back to me, but I tried multiple things and couldn't get this to work. And I wasn't sure if it was a problem. 
with my setup or something else, but I figured that the Pi is okay because it's worked fine with a serial console from like a PC and with a physical terminal. After not having much luck with that, I connected up a spare old Cisco switch of mine and kind of rigged it up like this because it was mail to mail and I didn't have a adapter so I'm just using the pins like this and put a little uh, blue tack on the one connector to kind of hold it in and you can see right here it boots up and all but it still acts like it doesn't recognize me sending anything to it I'm not sure what's up with that so this also did not work fully even though it looks like the receive is fine the last thing I tried on the serial was probably what I should have done the first time and I did a loop back just like this and I should see what I type echo back, but I do not. So I've got to circle back and see what's up with this thing. I don't know if it's something I've done or possibly maybe there's a remote chance that the module itself has an issue. I'm going to keep troubleshooting. And if it seems like I've got a problem with the uh, module, I'm sure that HackerBox folks won't have a problem helping me out there. The last thing I looked at from the instructable was this Fab GL joystick sketch and I grabbed that loaded it up and then wired up the joystick like this and checked out the display while moving the controller around and that looks like it works okay and could be cool to utilize with some sketches either with this or something else in the future a pretty neat little control here if you don't subscribe to hacker boxes and this kit looks like something you'd like as of right now at the time of this recording it looks like they're still in stock so you could still get one They've got a lot of great stuff there. Feel free to give them a look and see what they've got. They may have something you want to get. Also, just wanted to take a second to say what I like about Hacker Boxes. When searching for videos about this particular board, I ran into this one that I had actually seen before. It was in my history. And this is the kind of thing I like because I remember seeing this video now and I remember thinking that was a cool device, but then it totally slipped my mind. And the fact that being a subscriber to Hacker Boxes brought this device back for me to play with in this way was really cool. That's just something I like about this. So I'm looking forward to messing with this some more. I really want to see what's going on with the serial and see if it's my fault or something else and just get it resolved because I think this would make a nice low cost device to go into something like this, this Callisto old school looking terminal that can be 3D printed off of Thingiverse. I think that would be a really neat use for one of these. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye bye.